Welcome back, guys, to part four of my uh, Elite Dangerous Power Play playthrough. Now, where are we? We are on a mission to support our power. We are taking um, some propaganda, I think it is, through to... Let's have a look. What is it, actually? Liberal Federal Aid. No, we're taking aid to a system that we are trying to expand into. Um, so we're exporting, we are supporting, just make sure we're not going to crash. We're supporting an expansion attempt into a system, very oh, steady. <coughs> into a system that we are trying to, um, which I think is strategically important. Now this is one that's in the uh, the bottom of our sort of realm of influence, um, Felicia's winter, Felicia Winter's space. It's the one that's closest to the empirical power, so I thought that would be most useful to our power to expand into that area, create more of a buffer, um, and aid our defense because. What I'm thinking is there's going to be a war, of course, and we're going to be against all Empire powers from now on. And I was just thinking about this. This also means that I am able to attack any Empire powers that I come across. And in turn, they're able to attack me without any kind of... Um, well, it actually helps. It's a bonus for, uh, for my standing with my power if I attack an Empire power in Federation space or in the space of my power I should say. I think, I'm not quite sure yet, but I think that if I come across a, an Empire player in neutral space, um, I'm able to just attack that player. And I'm not sure if that means I, I get a bounty in that part of space or, or what. I really have no idea. <clears throat> Very different system. Still learning. This is still day one of power play. Um, so I'm figuring it out as I go along. Now, an interesting little thing I found was um, I took a little break between the last episode and this one, and I found that if you go to the cargo here, you'll see that I've got 20 units of liberal federal aid. Now, you only get 10 per half hour, and because I took a little break, um, the timer is in real time, so I, I I I didn't do anything. I just left my ship. I left the game turned on, um, and when I came back, I was able to add another ten units of aid to my cargo. So uh, potential exploit, probably, possibly. Um, but what that means is that if you really wanted to, and if you weren't bothered about your power bill, you could simply turn on. <coughs> Ooh, Diamondback Explorer. That's the new ship. Who's that with? Okay, that's just a local faction. Um, it means that you could turn on your game if you weren't bothered about your power. And you could leave your ship there. You could, And every half hour you could just come back if you were really boring. You could just come back to your ship. You could take another containers of federal aid. Another ten containers. And you could simply stock up and then do it in one run at the end of the day. It's it's kind of a, a waste, but all I mean is that there's a, a potential exploit there if you really wanted to use it. If you didn't want to play and you wanted to gain rank with your uh, power without doing very much, it seems like that's quite an easy way to do it. So I'm not sure how they're going to get around that. Probably not at all. Um, but yeah. As with anything, there's always going to be potential exploits. And they're there. People are going to exploit them if they can, but whatever. Not the end of the world. <coughs> now, as you might have noticed, I've sort of uh, gotten used to this corkscrew approach, so I'll come in at an angle and then I'll kind of swerve around and then ideally come close to the planet on the way to the system. And this has a, a twofold benefit. This means, firstly, that you can come in faster 
and the gravity of that planet will uh, slow you down and secondly it means that, fingers crossed, let's see you come out closer to the entrance to the, uh, the port you're trying to get to and in this case, not that close, but close enough sometimes if you line it up properly you can you can Don't come out of Super Cruise bang on the letterbox <clears throat> now as I'm new to... I'm just going to kill my speed a bit this is new, this whole speeding thing is totally new so I need to be under a hundred whatever units it is now in the uh, power mission that we're on to deliver this uh, federal aid it doesn't say which kind of um, which kind of station we have to deliver it to so I just chose one at random I think this might be neutral and I'm gonna see what happens <coughs> Landing gear deployed. so my assumption is that we can just deliver it to any station, it doesn't need to be one that's uh, allied to the Federation, which now that I think about it, it would be kind of strange anyway because this is one that we haven't actually taken over and Engines come to control yet, so um, let's just have a little check firstly, which where are we, who are we with? okay, so we are we're on a a station that is independent and neutral. So let's see. If we go down to contacts, let's get that mouse out of the way. Can we deliver? Yes, we can, as I thought. Let's have a look. So if I deliver 20, there we go. 20 merits, 2000 credits gained. Oh my god, I'm rich. Holy shit. Expansion progress 605, fuel contribution 20. Interesting. <clears throat> now this isn't a federation um, system so I'm not going to I'll just have a quick browse of the bulletin board I'll see what, what else is uh, available in the system in case there are any high earners but I'm not particularly interested in doing work for this starport and this minor faction there's quite a lot available so again as before if you'd watched my last episode I'm going to try to only do missions for small factions that are allied to the Federation. So we're looking for a revolutionary party of Ngugga and the Netcoms organization only. So there's one. Netcoms organization deliver light cargo. Where's that going to? It's another system. Not really enough worth not really enough um, money to make it worth it. So Revolutionary Party, this is the one that I'm guessing is trying to take over the system. I'm going to give them a tiny bit of cash. Because I think it makes sense if I'm going to be bringing... If I'm going to be um, doing these missions for these guys today, it's going to make sense that I try and up my reputation with them. All the rest are... what's this? Silver? Is it worth it? No, not really. <coughs> All the rest are... yep, yeah, just not worth it. Ooh, look at that. Who is that? Safe trade routes. Combat require... combat rank required expert. That's a much bigger reward than before. That's actually worth going out and doing. If it's only 130, like this one, it's really not worth it, unless you're in a, a ship that you know is not going to take much damage. I've done those kind of missions before, and I've, I've nearly died, and it's cost me more to repair my ship than it was actually um, fixing the thing up in the first place, uh, taking on the mission in the first place. Let's just see what these guys supply and demand these guys okay so these are the industrial industrial uh, system and what's most in demand ooh we can make a lot of money delivering gold and 
silver, it seems. Okay, so I'm just going to make a note of that. I'm going to be coming back here quite a lot. <clears throat> it seems quite strange to me because I noticed... Okay, so demand is high for all, pretty much all metals. So we've got demand. I'm just making a note. Demands gold and silver. I know through experience that they tend to make the most money. Palladium also. Palladium and platinum. Oh yeah, make quite a lot. Palladium. Platinum. And the others aren't really worth bothering with. But that surprises me because if we go to the system map here, I also notice that if you zoom out a bit, this right here is a metal-rich belt. So, I mean, what kind of system? What kind of system is this? Where does it say it should? Uh, it doesn't say here. <clears throat> I'll look at the galaxy map. What kind of economy is this? So this is a it's agricultural. Really? It's an agricultural system, but it's got metal reserves. Okay, strange, but there you go. Right. Um, because this is a power play uh, blitz play, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the system we were last at, Charonda. I'm going to do one more of these missions, um, and then I'm going to try and make some money on the way. So let's just take a little look here. Let's go back to the power play view. Control systems. Now, the control system where we came from is this one here. If I can select it, Chiranda. And that's the one where we need to pick up the um, the aid for the system where we are now, which is the one we've delivered it to, Nagorgara. Um, so that's our route. We're going from here to there and then back again. And then when that gets boring, I'll start throwing in some other uh, missions. I want to do a 45 Chiranda. I want to see what that's like. Um, they're going to be pretty similar, it seems. Most of the missions for Felicia Winters are essentially delivery missions, um, which suits me particularly well because I'm I'm not focused on fighting. Um, I'm flying an ASP, and in this ASP, I'm not looking to take on enemies that are particularly massive. I've kitted the ASP out more for um, defense than anything else. However, because we're going back to Chiranda, and I know, because I was just there, that Chiranda particularly need progenitor cells, I went into the um, into that tool, the trade tool, Elite Dangerous Trade Tool. This is a bug. This is annoying. There is a bug. You can't access some um, system maps. Let me try that again. So, what was it? Hill Park. What worked in the past was if I selected it like that and then hit System Map. That worked before. Ah, yeah, that's better. Okay. So, we're looking to come to. Yes, this is it. Curie Gateway. We're going to pick up some progenitor cells. So, that's our route. Um, and then we're going to head back to Charunga. We're going to deliver the progenitor cells. So we're going to make some cash. Because if I'm heading that way anyway, I always will make some money on the way. And yeah, this will pretty much be our day. We're going to be going back and forth. There's no ships in the way. <clears throat> and see what Powerplay has to offer. Um, now, of course, for different factions, that's a Cobra. For uh, different powers, sorry. If you were backing Hudson, for example, you... Um, ooh, fuck. 
you would be doing all combat missions, and that's fine. You know, I think it's fantastic that they've designed this very cleverly to support everyone's different kind of play styles and some powers support um, exploration much more. At the moment I'm focused on French trading as you can see from my ranks. My trade rank is merchant. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of combat but very little and no exploration whatsoever. So this faction, uh, this power, sorry, I Apart from being one that I uh, prefer for roleplay purposes, also suits my game style more. Now this may change once I um, once I get another ship, or perhaps I'll get bored. Um, yeah, then I might go and do a bit of combat. It would be nice to rank up and get some more experience at uh, combat, of course. But um, as I don't get to play that often. Uh, you know, I'm a, a weekend player only, and it's very rare that I get a chunk of time like I do today to just play. Um, yeah, I have to be kind of, I have to be more economical with my time. So, if I want to rank up or something, or give myself a goal to get a better ship, I really have to focus on that. And I, I haven't really just explored other aspects of the game so far. Um, and I think power play changes that, and I think it's fantastic because that's that's what it needed. It needed this this additional layer of uh, this additional depth, I'd call it, of content to really pull me in and, and give me something to work towards. Fuel scooping. Because just getting the biggest ship in the game and you know being untouchable didn't really interest me that much. Yeah, I like role playing this. I think it's fantastic what they've done. But yeah, it would be nice to um, get some combat in. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work with my power because Winters, Felicia Winters, my power is not so focused on um, on combat. Now it may be, just thinking about it, that one thing I could do would be to act as a kind of um, policeman for my power. So. Although there aren't going to be any missions for me, as um, there aren't going to be power missions for me as a because they're all focused on trading, um, I could I could rank up with this power by going out and killing ships from any other power that have strayed into our space. And I think I think my understanding is that you get one merit, and I've just read this on um, Reddit. My understanding is that you get one merit for every uh, ship from another power, essentially an enemy ship that you kill in your power space. A couple of ships up ahead. Who are these guys from? Interesting hills. So these are. Okay. That's a wing. That ship there was from the liberals of the local power, local faction. God. It's hard to keep track of what to call them. Minor factions, local systems, powers. Docking request granted. Powers are the the guys who I'm working for, and this kind of makes major factions a lot less relevant, I think. Because yes, I'm friendly with all these systems, but I mean, unless you're unless you have a bounty or you're an enemy of that faction. I don't think the factions really did very much before. Right, where's my landing pad? It's going to be right near the entrance, isn't it? Let's have a look. Where are you? Landing yep, gear right deployed. there. See the difference the head tracker makes? 50 quid, boys, I'm telling you. If you love this game, or if you like Armour 3, it works with that as well. It's well worth it. It just makes it so much more immersive. Right, here we go. And you can just turn it off here. Because this makes... Um, I'm just going to buy fuel. I cannot be bothered. 
<clears throat> Let's make some cash. So what we have to we are after progenitor cells. Excellent. Great price. I'm gonna load up on these completely. Actually I've just remembered I've got some grain. I have no idea why I have this. There was a mission to um deliver grain. So I bought some grain, but the mission was to deliver nine. I bought nine. I gave them nine and I had six left over. Very weird. Let's load up on this. Yep. This should net us at over a hundred grand. Let's just, uh, as always, let's just have a quick look at bulletin board and what's going on. Yeah, man. Ooh, lots of available missions. Trade, safe trade routes. To kill pirates. Okay. Spaceways aren't safe. What's this? I have to deliver two cartridges, two stolen food cartridges. Ooh, palladium to credits. One palladium. 96,000. Hmm. Now, I've never done mining. Even in the beta, I had access to it, but I just couldn't be bothered. And, oh wow, look at that. These guys really want um, palladium, but you need a trade rank of broker. But that makes it actually worth doing. It's 230 grand for three. Yeah, I'd spend an hour doing that. Or half an hour. Because you could also pick up other stuff and sell it. But yeah, mining I've kind of left for another day. Now, I'm just thinking... Um, if we go back to, let's have a look here, um, Galactic Powers, I love this, I love this by the way, and you can access this from the, from your ship anywhere, very cool. Now I'm just thinking about the, what kind of, oh there we go, about doing a different kind of mission, I'm, I'm curious to see what it's like, and um, so we've done an expand mission, expand mission. These seem pretty straightforward. Um, next would be to try a control mission. Now, to do to to execute to do a control mission, you have to go back to the headquarters, which is Rhea. and Chiranda is kind of the uh, base that we've chosen for today. Um, this is one that, as we can see here, needs um, supporting quite a lot. It's it's already started to be undermined a little bit. So there is work to be done here. Um, let's have a look at this. Expanding. 555. Now we know it's above that because we just delivered and it said 605. So 605, we're halfway towards uh, expanding into this system. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is we, do a, we make this a round trip. So we head to Chirunda. We sell our progenitor cells. We pick up. We pick up the aid from this expansion mission. And then, we go to the control. We pick up. Whatever it is we need to do for the control mission, we fly back to Chiranda, deliver the control mission stuff. Pick up another batch. Of aid. From Chiranda. And then we get, we get kind of, it's more efficient. Don't know if that makes sense, but I'm going to be doing two missions in one, as well as trading. So, uh, all about efficiency at this point. So I'll go over that again. So, I'm here right now. I've chosen this because we're going to be making some cash. So, we are going to control system Chiranda. There we go. That's a straight... Oh, that's fantastic. Do it in one jump. So we're going to go there first. We're going to deliver our cargo. Cargo. We're going to pick up the aid we need for the um, expansion mission. Then we're going to go to Rhea. And because I've got quite a good um, jump range, that's going to be pretty quick. Oh, by the way, anyone from Frontier, if you are by any chance watching this, one little thing... 
when you open the galaxy map can we have it default to fastest routes please because it always defaults to economic routes and who uses that really who cares about the amount of fuel you're using it's so cheap to buy fuel and everybody has a fuel scoop so I don't know if anybody even uses this economic routes economical routes um, option so yeah fastest routes is obviously always better so we go to, we're going to go to Rio, we're going to pick up the uh, cargo we need for the uh, control mission, then we're going to go back to Chiranda, we're going to deliver that to support, to fortify Chiranda. Then we're going to pick up another batch of the uh, federal aid bound for the expansion system, and boom, that's two or three birds with one stone. <clears throat> And that's actually not a bad t name for this episode, so how about we call it that? Two birds, one stone. Sweet. If I can fit that in the uh, Ship YouTube Engines description. Landing gear retracted. Ah, one thing I've... Oops. Steady. One thing I've forgotten to do is um, in the galaxy map choose... This is a bit busy. Is that a hauler? That's an adder, I think. Is that a hauler or an adder? Hauler. One thing I haven't done, I've forgotten to do, is choose a um, station. So we're heading to Chiranda. We haven't got a station picked out yet. I may as well do it now. While I'm getting out of the uh, gravity lock of the uh, station. So where are we going? I'm the closest to... Yeah. That's where we went last time. Cool, done. We're not mass locked anymore. Friendship drive, drive charging. Now another little tip I picked up on uh, Reddit, which has been really handy today, is as soon as you start charging, uh, jumping rather, as soon as now, four, four three, two, three, one, throttle two, down. One, engage. And now I can let go of the throttle. So when it was counting down, then four, three, two, one. I throttle down, and this means that when you arrive at the new system at the star, you're not you're not flying headlong into that star anymore. Look, watch, boom, stopped. Fantastic. That means that if for whatever reason you're distracted or you're doing something else, it's kind of a good habit to develop, because you know this game, especially if you're space trucking, it does become kind of monotonous, and yeah, it's too easy to get distracted. I often, because um, I've got three screens, I'll put uh, YouTube on or Netflix on or one of the screens and I'll, I'll be kind of watching a movie or watching watching uh, someone else on YouTube, someone's video. And I'm kind of only half, I'm only playing the game with half a brain. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a good, if I can build up that muscle memory and play like that, that means that you're not, yeah, I'm not going to fly headlong into a uh, star and pick up some damage just for no reason whatsoever. So as before, I'm going to try and use the planet for gravity, basically as a break. So I'm going to try and... There we go. I don't want to get too close to it. If you get too close to the planet, it slows you right down. So I've found kind of roughly here, halfway between the um, planet and the the uh, the route of the station around the planet is pretty good, so as you can see, it slowed me down quite nicely. You can come in faster than this. I'm just not. I'm here to relax today. It's good. So, but uh, yeah, another another little habit that uh, I picked up uh, from YouTube from Cornelius. I've forgotten his second name. A guy I found out is out in Latvia he makes very good um, videos on Elite Dangerous and has ranked up to, I think, Elite in everything. It's insane. He's got Elite in everything. He's got an Anaconda. He's got, he's got about 3 billion credits or something. I mean, I just wonder how he earns an income. You know, how do you, <laughs> what does he do for a living that he has that much time on his hands? I certainly don't. Docking request granted. Look at that station. Stunning. Ah, oh, do love this game. 
this is by far the best space sim out in the genre head and shoulders above everything else um, I haven't enjoyed a game as much as this for a very long time I was well into the X3 um, series uh, Albion Prelude I thought was fantastic a little bit buggy but but great um, and where is my landing pad? Oh. Landing gear deployed. Right, let's see if we can just drop right on top of it. Here we go. Head tracker. Oh, useful. Now, um, I found out later with the release of uh, X Rebirth that um, EgoSoft, the guys who did successful. the whole X series. Uh, had a real history of uh, releasing incredibly buggy games, but um, that didn't really concern me because I came into the uh, series very late. 90,000? Yeah, not great. Yeah, I came into the series late, so it didn't really bother me too much. Um, but yeah, I put about Oh god, 300 plus hours into um, now what are we doing? We're not doing a preparation mission, so we don't want propaganda. We're doing this one. This is kind of confusing. We're doing this one, deliver federal aid. So we want to take that. Yep. And then we're going to do some fortification. Fortify progress 30, undermine progress 15. So. Interesting that the uh, if you look down the bottom there, fortify it, you're under networking. The fortify to fortify, we have to do much less than uh, the underminers have to do. So the undermine threshold is 2,333, whereas the fortify threshold is 1,193. So interesting that it's easier to keep the system than it is to undermine it. So it's mm, interesting. And actually, just looking at that, is that exactly double? It's almost double. So maybe, just from looking at this, you have to do twice the work to undermine a system than you do to fortify it. Interesting. Right, so we have picked up our liberal aid. And we are now going to go to Rhea. Hang on. We're going to go to rear and we are going to pick up. Right, now what we do here? Uh, we are. Oh, which is pretty close actually. How far is that? Two jumps. Oh, I love this house. Let's pick a station. So we're going to go to rear. We're going to pick up the uh, fortification cargo. For the fortify mission, and it's crashed again. Ah, this bug. Let's try that again. I'm sure this will get fixed in a patch by the time you come to watch this, but it's still pretty annoying. So let's try again. Select, go to system. Right now it works. Rhea, interesting, has metallic common reserves. So we just want to choose the closest. Ugh, 500. It's pretty far. So we want to plot a route there. Ito orbital. And when we get there, we'll find out what they um what they need. And maybe we can turn that into a trade route as well. Now, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. If you're enjoying this, please let me know. Also, if you have a name for the ship, let me know. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.